favorites, Ingrid. Today we're going to do a little bit of watercolor and I am guest designing for the Happy Little Stampers watercolor challenge. And we're going to use Butterfly Birthday, The Butterfly Dies, and the Mixed Media Fun stamp set to create a really nice fun card that is good for just about any occasion. So why don't we go ahead and get started. So the challenge this month is really anything goes. There are always anything goes and there's always a little twist if you want to participate in that. And the twist today is going to be dyes. So we're going to create a background using some watercolor and some stencils and then I'm going to incorporate some of the butterfly dyes into my project. So to get started, I have a piece of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Now watercolor paper has a couple sides to it. You have one that has a little bit more tooth to it and one that's really more smooth. Now, being that this particular piece, I'm gonna use it more for watercolor. I'm just gonna put a little bit of some removable adhesive onto the back there just to kind of help secure that down to my surface. And then I have this great stencil. I just wanna position it exactly where I want it to be and I just kinda of want it to sit there in the background, almost like lattice. So I just wanna secure this down as well. And then once I have this secure, I'm gonna do a little bit of sponging using some Distress inks. Now Distress inks are very reactive inks. They have some great fugitive properties. You can use any inks, any type of dye-based ink. Something that's going to react with water is what you want. So I like the Distress inks just because they have some very interesting properties. And we're gonna always start with our lightest shade. And so I have some tumble glass and I'm going to, in a round motion, just put this over my stencil and cardstock, and this is going to start to become blue. Now we're going to end up adding several different shades, and I'm gonna speed this up. You get the gist. Now, once you have it looking exactly like you want, we're gonna then incorporate the water part into it and thus the water color. So here we go. This is Broken China and this is a darker hue. And I'm just kinda randomly going in places. I don't necessarily need it to be in specific spots and I can always come back in later with more if I feel I need it. And this is Salty Ocean and this is a real kind of true blue. It's a very pretty color. You can see we're just gonna add that there. And then we're gonna go into Mermaid Lagoon, which is even a brighter blue. Very, very pretty. Almost kind of turquoise-ish blue. Kind of jewel tone. And it's, we're gonna have this really cool stencil pattern where our stencils remain. You can see I'm kind of keeping the middle a little light. And then I've even pulled off to the side some peacock feathers. Now peacock feathers has a little bit more of a green in it, so kind of really a true turquoise. And this will just give us some interest as well. It's kind of overlap some of these other colors. Just giving it some pop here. Very, very pretty tone. And lastly, I'm gonna actually come back in with the tumble glass. I'm just gonna kind of get rid of some of this excess blue. And this is my lightest shade. And the reason I come back in with a lighter shade is just to kind of blend everything nice and evenly. So there we go. So now that we have our background exactly how we want it, I'm gonna take some water, and this is just a, like a mini mister. This one's by Stampin' Up. You can get one by Ranger or use any type of a spritzer. But you wanna kinda have a fine mist here. You wanna be able to control it. I'm gonna, from a little bit of a ways away, I'm just gonna mist it really well. And what this is doing is it's gonna activate that dye ink. And you can see it kinda starting to move around. I also have a water brush here just kind of nearby just in case I need it to sop up some, some of the water. So here we've kind of activated that and I have a paper towel in case I need to blot anything off. I'm just gonna add a little more water here. Really kind of get those inks going. And then we're going to, actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna actually lift this up as quick as I can and as straight as I can. I wanna try and keep that water from going underneath if possible. You know, it's not gonna be perfect and that's just the way it is. It's kind of a live project. So just lift that up and we've got a very cool pattern. You can see I had some water get in here. That's all right. I'm gonna take another piece of paper. I'll just lay down my stencil. 
see if I can't get a cool pattern here. Just kind of blot that with a paper towel. This is regular cardstock that I'm doing this with, and look at that. You know, I may use this, I may not, but it's a great underneath part for something else, and we'll just lay that off to the side and allow that to dry. Now, the thing with this is I do need this to dry as well, so I'm just gonna quickly zap it. So now that we have our background, we're gonna now do some butterflies. So I have the birthday butterfly stamp set, and I love using this big butterfly. So first, before I do anything, I'm gonna take a de-static tool and just kind of rub it all over my cardstock. I'm again using 140 pound cold pressed watercolor cardstock. And this is the fine side. The last time I used more of the tooth side, this time we're using the fine side, and this is VersaFine black onyx ink and I really love this ink to do embossing with if I'm gonna do it in black might as well have a black under layer and we're just gonna get a couple butterflies here nice image and then I have some black embossing powder and this is by Ranger And there we go. We'll heat set that and add some color. So now that I have my butterflies and they're done, I'm gonna take some of the brush out that I have, and this is orange and lemon. I have this really great 24 pack, and it's got a lot of really cool colors in here. Uh, really a great one to kind of get started with if you're new to brush show. And brush are little pigmented powders. So I have here the lemon, and we're just gonna kind of pop those down. I'm gonna add lemon to both. This way I might have a little bit of a variation with my orange right here. And then this is the actual color watercolored. I just did those on a piece of watercolor paper and then just punched them out using a punch. This way I can control a lot of my brush out coming out. And so you can see I have the different powders here and they're gonna kinda get caught in those ridges from the embossed edge that we have that's slightly raised off the paper. So, and I think what I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit more yellow. So I have lemon yellow and I'm gonna use regular yellow too. So we have a yellow butterfly and kind of an orangish yellow butterfly. So now that we have that, we're then gonna spritz them as well. And I'll start with the yellow. And you can see that color kind of exploding. And that's what's interesting about brush -O, is they use different colors to create their colors. So you may get uh, some different color variations, which is interesting. Now, in a space where maybe I don't have as much color as I'd like, I'm just gonna pop a little bit more in there and maybe just give it a quick little spritz. You can always move it around too with your watercolor brush if you feel you need to. I have a lot of watercolor running off the edge here because my paper bows as it gets wet. So I don't want to lose all my pigment. So I'm just going to kind of get that off the side. And this is good. I don't want it to be all really intense. I have some lighter areas as well, which is really pretty because butterflies a lot of times are translucent. So now we'll just go ahead and spritz this one. And I'm just gonna spritz from an opposite angle because I don't want that orange to head in towards the other one. And that's cool. Look at that different color variation. That's very interesting. Very watercolor painted. I couldn't do that if I tried on my own. And that's some of the beauty of working with brush -O. So now I'm gonna allow that to dry and I'm going to give it a little bit of a boost only because I don't want it to run too much. of drying that paper also around it so that it flattens out a little bit. You don't want to get too close because you don't want to overheat your embossing at the same time. And then I'm going to set this to the side and allow that to dry naturally. And that's really pretty. I feel like it needs a little teeny tiny bit of color there. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the lemon, not the orange just kind of let that there we go I'm 
but very pretty. This one is really kind of translucent, which is what butterflies are like, and this one's a little more vibrant, which is very interesting. And these are both gonna be very complementary to this background. So once that's dried, we'll put it all together. So now that this is dry, for the most part dry, I have a very, very damp paper towel, and I'm just gonna run this over the top and just kind of remove anything that might be on the embossed part, especially that middle part just so that it's nice and shiny and really kind of vibrant, that black. And so we have two very, very cool looking butterflies. Next, we're going to cut these out using the coordinating die, and then we will put our card together. So for my greeting, I'm gonna take the mixed media fun set and I'm gonna take some random words and create, and just to give you an idea of how I'm kind of putting my card together, I have this uh, watercolor panel that we created and I've got my nice, bright, vibrant butterflies and they're gonna kind of cover up some of the watercolor that got into where the stencil is. And that's why I don't ever worry about making mistakes because it's so easy to cover things up. And then from there, we're gonna add a little bit of uh, some words kind of coming out and just kind of create a fun card. So I've already used a de-static tool over this and we're gonna ink these up using Versamark ink. And then I've got my dream, travel, love, and imagine words. And this is just gonna be a great everyday card, you know, for my niece or anyone really. Anybody who just needs a, a nice little card. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and emboss these in white. So we're, I'm gonna emboss these and then I'm gonna trim them down. Now that I have them embossed and they're really kind of supposed to look very artsy and mixed media like. So I don't mind that they're not perfect. I actually prefer that they aren't. I'm taking large scissors to just kind of cut and trim down close to the words. I don't need them to be uh, really have really long black. We can always try having some with some longer pieces. We can always kind of mix them up a little bit and see see how that goes. I'm still gonna trim them close, but maybe have a couple that are like that. I always like to just kind of bend these up a little bit here, just giving a little bit of interest, and then I pop a little bit of uh, dimensional tape underneath. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to have these words kind of going off to the side. They kind of pop off because they're nice and black, and that's gonna be our finished card. So, nice card for just about any occasion. Be a perfect one for my niece. I'll throw on a couple of sequins as well. And uh, here I have some close-ups for you. Enjoy them. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to check out our video channel over here at Happy Little Stampers. We have, we're in our second year. We just started last year, but we had over 50 videos last year alone. There are a lot of techniques, a lot of great projects and definitely submit your card to the watercolor challenge. I look forward to seeing what you create. Have a nice day, bye-bye.